Welcome to the next lesson in our course, Basic Beginners FreeCAD for FreeCAD version 1. This is a revised and up-to-date version of the original video with additional content. This lesson guides you through a basic FreeCAD modeling exercise to create a simple drilled shim. Looking at the subject we want to create, we can see it's quite simple. We can see two profiles in the technical drawing. The most complex is from the top. Looking at the cross sections, we can see we can just create this profile and extrude it upwards as the cross sections are the same all the way through. So let's open up FreeCAD and start our modeling. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. We've already opened up FreeCAD and I'm going to start a new document by clicking on the toolbar icon or come out to file and new. I'm going to select the part design workbench from the workbench letter. As said in lesson two, we may see the toolbars are not in the correct places. If like me, you have the standard toolbars running across the top here, and then the part design toolbars, we'll need to move these down into the toolbar below or a new toolbar. You can distinguish the part design from the standard toolbar by hovering over one of the icons. As you can see, it says STD underscore what's this. If I look to the icon to the right, I can see that's the part design toolbar. To move the toolbar, hover over the divider until we get the move icon, click and hold the left mouse button and drag it down. If we drag it down, a new toolbar is created, but we can also merge it with the current one. Now I'm going to drop it here. I'm going to repeat this with the other part design toolbars. Now we've got the toolbars placed, let's have a look at the panels. At the moment, I've got the model and task panel separate. I'm going to take the model panel, click the left mouse button and hold, and drag this out and hover it over the task panel. The whole task panel highlights in blue. I know they're going to be merged so I can release the mouse button. Now I have the task model tab. I can click and hold and drag the model tab to the left. For navigation, we can refer back to lesson three. And if we remember back, I'm going to be using the touchpad. So if I hover over that, we can see the different navigation, mouse and shortcut keys that we'll be using. And we can change that to our desired method of navigation. Now that's all set up, let's start our part design workflow. To begin with, we create a container. Each part is contained within a single container in the part design. We can have multiple containers. That's great a new body and it gets added to the tree view. Within you can see the body is highlighted in bold. This is the active body. If we had two bodies in here, then FreeCAD has to distinguish between them when we're creating new operations in geometry. Those operations will be placed in the active body. If it's not in bold, then we can right click and then click active body. Notice there's a check by the side of it. If I click that, then it will toggle its state. We want it bold and active. A double click does the same. Below the body, we have the origin. And you can see at the moment, it's hidden and it's grayed. If I click on the eye, it becomes visible. Let's click off so it's unselected and we can see the planes and the axes of the body. This is local to the body, though it's in line with our global coordinate system. This will display when we create a new sketch. I'm going to select the origin and hide it for the time being. So for our base shape, we know it's a simple rectangle with holes. So we need to create the 2D profile of that base shape. To do that, we create a 2D sketch using the Create Sketch button. The planes of the body appear and we can select which plane to place the sketch upon. For this exercise, we're using the XY plane. We can also select it from the panel and we can click OK. 
We're now on the task panel and in the sketch workbench. Once we've finished sketching, we'll be returned back to the part design workbench. Along the top, we have a number of different geometries and constraints that we can attach to our sketch. The 3D view is still in 3D. You notice the X and Y axis of the sketch, but no Z axis. Though the Z axis runs this way, we're dealing with a 2D sketch. So we're sketching upon the sketch plane. To reset our view, we can click the top because we're in line with the global planes, or we can use the view sketch icon. That will place the sketch perpendicular to what it's attached to. In this case, the XY plane of the origin. Just going to pan my sketch down to center it. Before we start sketching, let's explore the panel on the left and also set some settings. The solver message will show you any messages or warnings regarding your sketch. Underneath, we have the constraints. Any of the constraints, which are supplied by these icons here, will appear in this list. Also in here, we need to set some settings. If I drop this icon down, we need to make sure the auto constraints is checked and the auto remove redundancy is checked. We just select those to check and uncheck them. What this allows us to do, I'm going to demonstrate this by using the line tool from the toolbar. Now for left click, we get an icon by the side of the cursor showing the tool and also the type of constraint. So if I bring this up, I get a horizontal line showing a horizontal constraint and a vertical line. This means that I don't have to be exactly straight to apply the constraint. I can slightly off. As you can see here, if I click, the constraint is added and we can see the constraint is added on the left hand side. We also see the element is added. I'm going to right click to cancel the tool. And if I look at the element here, we have three lines. So I click the first one. You'll notice that the line is highlighted in green. If I click the second, the top point is highlighted in green. And the last, the last point is highlighted in green. Click again to remove the selection. Let's add another line. Now the auto constraint setting means that if I hover over this point here, you can see the constraints change. If I hover over the edge, we get something called a point on object constraint. If I hover over the point, we get a coincident constraint. This means that the point, if I click now, will be attached to that point and we click off. As you can see, this point is in red, showing it's connected and these points are in white, showing they're not connected. If I create another line going this way, I'm going to right click to cancel the tool. And let's say they were created close to each other. We can see there's no constraint around here, although they look connected. And this can easily cause problems with beginners. So look for the red points, if they're connected or not. Even if I had a line, so this line here with point on object constraint, it shows that they're not connected with a coincident constraint. And right click to cancel the tool. And though that is connected to that line, it can move up and down it. We can see there. And if we pull it out this way, it's just kept in line with that constraint. To remove geometry, we can remove the individual lines by clicking on them and pressing the delete key on the keyboard. We can remove multiples. Click one, then click the other. This is called a hungry selection. I click the other one, it's added. And if I click one of the lines that's already been added, it's removed. So I can hit delete to delete that line, or I can click and hold and then drag a selection around those two lines and hit delete on the keyboard. Now, before we start sketching our profile, there is one more thing, and that's this scaling down the bottom. At the moment, it's 154 by 100. This is the available space in our 3D view. If I zoom in and out, you can see it changing down the bottom. Also, if I drag the left hand panel and push it in and out, we can see it changing down here. So if I created a piece of geometry that was roughly the length of the 3D view, we can see from the field in the middle, it's saying its length is 124. And if we look down to the bottom, it's 127. So keep that in mind when you're sketching. 
I'm going to right click to cancel that tool. The sketch I want to create is a rectangle, so I'm going to select the rectangle tool. Also available from right click and create rectangle. The toolbar itself has more options from this drop down. So we have such tools as a centered and rounded rectangle from there. Let's create the rectangle now. By the side of the cursor, you'll see some coordinates. And this tells us how far we're away from the center point. So we're going minus along the X and positive along the Y. My rectangle is going to be 50 millimeters long. I'm going to click once and bring this out. And you can see we have two fields, one along the top, one along the side. So I can type in 50 millimeters along the top, use the tab key to tab to the next field and then enter my dimension. If I accidentally click or hit enter a number of times, the rectangle gets added, but we can add a dimension or edit dimensions. Notice the 50 millimeters. My view is zoomed out quite a way. So it fits in only part of the screen. I'm going to right click to cancel the tool. And now I can double click on this dimension if I wanted to change it, or I can dimension the left hand side with the dimensioning tool. Click on the edge and bring out a dimension. This dimension is going to be 30 millimeters. Just type in 30, hit enter or OK. Right click to cancel the tool. And now we can move this into the position. On the left hand side in the solver messages, you can see we have two degrees of freedom. This tells me my geometry can move in two degrees. So we have one and two along the X and the Y. It's best practice is to get this to zero degrees, which means it's fully constrained. I want to center this rectangle. Just going to zoom in slightly and I want to send it over this point here, the point of origin or the origin of the sketch. To do that, we use the constraint symmetric. So we need two points with respect of another line or a third point. Two points are going to be these corners. First of all, click somewhere to make sure we have nothing selected. Click the first point and then click the second point. We can see the elements being added on the left hand side and then click the center point and then click on the constraint. The constraint is added. Our whole sketch has gone green. And if we look to the left, it's saying it's fully constrained. If I close that now, we have our sketch, which we can select and then use the pad operation. So this is true the sketch. It adds volume to it. If I apply the pad operation, panel on the left, we can select the length and the type. I'm just going to use the length for the time being of two millimeters and hit OK. So we have our shim, but there's no drill holes in here. There's two ways of adding the drill holes. We can either create a sketch on this surface, this face by selecting it and creating a sketch or to reduce the operations. If we come into the pad and look at the sketch within, we can double click it and add the holes in here. What you see in front of you is known as a profile. A closed profile means that we have a shape that if we pour volume in, it won't leak out. If for instance, let's take this point here and I'm going to hit delete on the keyboard. And what you'll see is one of these constraints will be deleted. So one of the coincident constraints has gone. Also, if we look up to the top, we've got two degrees of freedom. This means that we have movement in our sketch I can pull this out. So if I add volume to this now, it will leak out of here. We don't have a closed profile. This is also known as wire not closed. These edges are known as wires. At the moment, this is open. So if I close this now, you'll see an error on the left hand side. If I hover over that, you can see it there. Why not closed? If you've got the report view pop up on error messages like I have here, We'll also see it in the bottom. This is annoyance, as said before in a setup video, we need to go to edit preferences and we have the report view. We've got show report view on error, warnings and messages. Just uncheck that and hit OK. And I'm going to close the panel and we'll have a simple notification down the bottom here. So to solve that, let's double click the sketch. And remember that these need to be on top of each other. 
And if I click and highlight, that will highlight the two points underneath that selection. If I do it in the reverse, it will highlight anything touching that selection. So from top to bottom. And then we can use this constraint here, the Quinston constraint. Click that and that's connected back up. For the holes, we use a simple circle and place circles in here. And I'm just roughly sketching them in. Clicking once, move the mouse pointer out and clicking again. Right click to cancel the tool. And I want to select all of these. So I want to select each of the circles and we make those equal, give them equal diameter. So I now want to place this circle a distance away from this point. Now there's two ways of using constraints. Make sure nothing's selected, clearing the selection, and I'm going to select this point and this one, they're both in green, and then use the dimensioning constraint. And we move the constraint into position. So I want a horizontal constraint here, just by moving the mouse, we click to accept and type in the dimension and hit OK. You can see the tool is still selected. Another way is making sure nothing's selected and then using the tool first. This means that I have to select one point and because it needs a second, it will automatically take a point of origin. Everything's turned orange saying it's in redundant constraint, but we don't have to worry about that. And if we hover over this point here and click we've added the constraint in. As we move, we move from redundant because we're adding another five millimeter going across this way, which we've already got, becomes redundant. We move to the left, we get the constraint we want and type in five millimeters. While the dimensioning tool is still available, I'm going to take this circle and set a diameter. Let's click to drop and set this to four millimeters and hit OK. Because all the others are equal, that gets applied across all of them. Now you notice parts of the sketch are in green, which means they're fully constrained and parts are still in white, meaning they still need constraint. Now we could go around and repeat for every circle, but there's no need. If I anchor the bottom circle, this corner, with a height of five millimeters, and also a length, five mil, and then right click to cancel the tool. I just need to make sure that these two points are in line for this one and also this one. So for that, we use a constraint horizontal and vertical and then click the point of one circle, the point of the other, adds the horizontal constraint in and the point of this one and this one. This circle is fully constrained and we just need to repeat on the other side. The sketch has gone bright green. It's fully constrained. Fully constrained is best practices. It's not essential. Sometimes our design intent will require our sketch not to be fully constrained. After I close the sketch, we have our final result. So that's a basic introduction of making a simple model. There was a lot in that lesson. As we progress through the lessons, there will be less of that background knowledge regarding the panels, the settings, etc., And we'll be concentrating more on the modeling. Hope you enjoyed that lesson and I hope to see you in the next one. If you like what you've seen and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0 or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header, on the about page, or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing to these videos. And I hope to see you again in the next one.